A very good morning to you all. What a great honor to be here and first speaker. Uh, I can feel the tension. Um, you might think looking at this title that I'm going to speak about how to hold your breath, how to learn to handle pressure at 11 times the Earth's atmosphere, because that's what you're going to experience at 101 meters. But I don't think that either of those things are going to be the challenges we face. And if you want to learn about either of those things, you can Google them and you can start learning. You can find a teacher in any city in the world and that teacher will start to help you. Most of us who want to do this, though, will never do that Google and we will never ring that teacher. The real challenge challenge we're going to face if we want to go here is different. Reality check. The real challenge is people like me don't free dive. I don't have enough tattoos. I don't do yoga. Uh, I have a job. I'm busy. And I'm going to call that the tiger. We'll wind all of that up together. We'll just give it a name for today. We'll call it the tiger, the thing that roars and stops us doing what heart and soul we want to go and do. So this speech really could be called this, but it was quite a long title. It goes, how to stop watching The Big Blue, which is a great free diving movie, from the comfort of your sofa with a beer, and instead engage with the world and make things happen for yourself and others that you weren't sure at all at the beginning that you could do. And lots of other people told you you definitely could not do. And that made you a little bit nervous because you might get it wrong and look silly in front of other people. So you might as well have another beer instead. Remain on the sofa and complain that nothing ever happens for you. Hey, here's an idea, ladies and gentlemen. We're writing the story of our lives. We hold the pen. Who else could possibly be writing the story of your life other than you? It's not the boss you can leave today. It's not your mother and father. We love to blame them for many years for how it all turned out, but we have to wake up one day and say, okay, you know, I'm 98 years old. I, I have to take responsibility at some stage for this story. There's got to be a, a sell-by, a use-by date for blaming our parents for how it all turned out. We hold the pen. And how do we write our story, decision, action, result every moment of every day? Decision, action, result of every moment of every day that we are awake. And we are the, the, the culmination, the addition of all the decision, actions, and results we've taken so far in life, from the fact that you live here in Geneva to what you're wearing this morning. You decided to put these clothes on. Action, you put these clothes on. Result, watching you come in, really, 95% of the room, great work, great work. But <laughs> it's part of your story now, however it goes. So what I'd like to do is share seven ideas on how we can deal with, tame this thing that I'm calling the tiger in order to go write the story that we want to write, to dive to 101 meters if that's what we want to do. First idea, act boldly today, which means actually leaving the sofa. Now, all human beings, we all share one, one tr many traits, but here's one that's important in this context. We wait before we do something that's new, a little bit uncertain. We haven't done it before. We don't know how it is going to go, ringing that person, whatever it may be. We'll wait before we do that new, slightly scary thing until our current situation is more scary than the new thing, right? and then we go. So uh, we get given a, a deadline, we've got a hit. Uh, we get some pressure from another person, perhaps somebody in authority relative to us. We, uh, we get some uh, 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 advice from the doctor that we really need to address something in our lifestyle quite urgently. Suddenly the current situation is more scary, we move. Top performers in whatever field share the trait of being aware of this and moving past it. What is it you need to do? We need to leave the sofa. That's going to be the first thing. And that means leaving behind how we got here in the first place. We've got to find a new way, start doing some new things. So we share that trait. And change, when we want to make change, happens quickly. And we love the idea, and we've been sold the idea that change is incredibly complex and takes us a very long time. Let's have another reality check. Everybody sitting here today or watching in, in weeks and years to come knows that they have made changes in their lives in a heartbeat. What takes us time is deciding what that change will be out of all the options we have in all the universe and then committing to make it happen. And as soon as we make that commitment, our behaviors shift 
The future becomes a, a degree certain. There's still a lot of uncertainty getting there, but we decide the path and we go. How can we accelerate that? This will help us to do that. So when we're sitting on that sofa, first thing we can do then if we want to free dive to 101 meters is to act boldly, to leave the sofa. But, but, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that because we know that people like us can't do these things. We know that uh, we're too old uh, or, or we're too young or, or we don't have the talent or that cool people like that won't speak to somebody like me to give me the advice I would need. We have a rule book in our heads about who we are, about what we can do in the world, and what the world has done for us, how the whole thing works. And it's unique and different for each one of us, which is kind of odd if it's a rule book, huh? We've created this with some help over the years, but we've created this and we hold on to it. And it's very useful. It's very useful because it gives us a great reason why people like us can't do the things that we want to do. We have to do the things that other people want us to do, which is kind of handy, because we don't have to go to the new uncertain place. We can stay where we are. Now, unwittingly, my daughter gave me some very important advice on this. She was singing one day and I was listening. And she'd been influenced in turn by a very famous princess. And, and she used this line. She said, I don't care what they're going to say. Let the storm rage on. <laughs> the cold never bothered me anyway. Now, she, I should add, I have two daughters, one of 19 and one of two. This one is the two-year-old. <laughs> I've never quoted a Disney princess before, but when it comes to these rules, perhaps we have to let it go. Let it go. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I guess I asked for it. These are fictions, largely they're fictions. Some of them may be real, but we won't know until we test them. We won't know until we test them. And some things might go wrong as we do that testing, of course. And that we can manage, that we can contain, that we can seek support on. But we don't know unless we test them. While I sit on my sofa and believe that I can't free dive to 101 meters, I'm dealing with fictions. Reality check. Now, I, if I start to move into the realities, test, seek good advice, get quality mentoring, now I might, might be able to see that my possibilities for my story are radically different than I thought. Now, if you're gonna take a risk, any kind of risk, off the sofa, do the new thing, you're gonna hear voices in your head. A question to you, a show of hands. How many people hear voices speaking to them in their heads? Okay, very honest, about 5% of the room. Now. For the rest of you whose hand didn't go up, the voice I'm worried about is the voice that you just spoke with and you said, no, I'm okay, I don't hear voices <laughs> in my head. Well, maybe I do, maybe I do. No, he might point at me, I'll put my hand right. That's the voice. If we're gonna do new stuff, we're gonna hit this voice. It's the voice of the tiger and we don't like it. But we can deal with it. So, for example, if you're sitting in the changing rooms and you've got to leave the changing room in Sharm El Sheikh and you've got to go out uh, into the ocean and swim out to a platform and free dive to 101 meters and it's record day and the governing judge, the, the, the governors, uh, the judges from the world governing body, AIDA, uh, are, are waiting out there for you and there are cameras there and there are members of the public coming to watch and in my case, you failed yesterday. I had two consecutive days where me and others had the facilities and we could go and try our records and I'd coming off a failure and I'm sitting in the changing room and the voice in my head is saying, you shouldn't be here. Why don't you get changed and go home? You don't have to be here. And I don't. At moments like this, I don't think it's good enough to look in the mirror and say, it'll be great. I believe I can. That's not the way you approach a real reality check challenge. It's not the way you approach a free dive to 101 meters. You have to know you've earned the right to be able to speak back <laughs> out loud if you need to, but keep it in a private place. Speak back to the voice. Literally, coach yourself around. I've done my work. When I first went to 15 meters, it felt like I was being sucked into the depths of hell using this sled that I used. It was a no limits discipline free dive. 
by the time I was getting to 25, it was feeling good. I've done my yoga, I've done my breath hold, I've extended that out now from 30 seconds to five minutes. I've changed my diet, I've worked hard with my coaches, I've worked on the technical side of how you equalize through this dive, because you're gonna equalize very consistently and uh, all the way through, and that's gonna become extremely important to your success. I've done all of that work, but the voice is still going in my head that I shouldn't be there. I have to be able to argue back. Secondly, secondly, when you're performing, the voice can come into your head. And I want to just really, perhaps it's slightly off topic for this, but I just want to share it to you. When it came to the free dive, I was really, really getting voices loud in my head uh, whilst I was diving. Uh, can you do this? Should you be here? I go, whoa, this is not the time for this. Right? I was meeting the tiger at 80 meters under the ocean, which is a bad place to meet the tiger. So your heartbeat increases and you don't want this. There's nothing to breathe down there. There's no scuba diver waiting to give you a, a go on, on, uh, on his or her scuba tank at, at, at 100 meters. That's too dangerous for scuba divers. So I, I thought I'd experiment. So I tried, you ever heard of an ear worm? It's a tune that, that gets into your head, a bit like uh, that Disney tune, and, and you can't get rid of it. Well, I decided to, to work, to, to create an earworm. And I managed to do it with a tune called Ad Gure Name by a, by a group of singers and instrumentalists called Dev Premal. I worked at this every free dive, every relaxation, every yoga, every time I was on an aircraft, I was listening to this repeatedly began to drive me mad, but when I dived, it was in Dolby surround sound. I had a little core left in the middle, which was for thinking about the technical side of what I was doing, and the rest of me was just bathed in this noise, in the most silent place on the planet. What do you need to do to help you get over the hump? What innovation, what creativity, what advice, what can you pull on that'll help you Get off your sofa and go do the things you need to do. So we're gonna have to do the work, and that's why I've put this one in here. It's critical. This is not about looking in the mirror saying, it'll be cool, and trying straight away. It is about getting involved and trying, but with guidance, with help, and before we go and do the big thing, the big presentation to the board of our great innovation, or, or the free dive, or whatever it is you're thinking about out there, we're going to have to do the work. I can't stress this enough. Now. A lot of people say that the tiger must really attack you at 101 meters under the ocean, down there with nothing to breathe in. As I said, you, you can't afford that attack at 101 meters. The tiger will attack you if you decide you're gonna be crazy enough to go around saying you're gonna try and set a new British free diving record and be the first of the Brits to get to 100 meters, which isn't a great depth in world terms, by the way. The tiger doesn't roar Really, once you've controlled it on that dive, the tiger is always gonna roar when you look at your calendar because you're too busy and I'm too busy. But change, let's keep it simple, change, reality check, change is going to happen in the calendar. You wanna get healthier, change what's in the calendar. You wanna have a different impact on your colleagues at work, change what's in the calendar. You want to learn new skills and be incredibly competent in an area that's really important to you of whatever that is in your life. Change what's in the calendar. We're going to have to always go to the calendar to find change, but you've got no room in the calendar. So we're back to the Disney song. We've got to let some stuff go, but we don't like letting anything go that's in our calendar because it got us here. It's paying the bills. It's keeping the boss happy, the husband, the wife, the children, the whole thing is happy. It's all good because of what's in the calendar. And we get back to that cliche, what got us here won't get us there. But it's not really a cliche. Think about this. Well, it might be, but it's valuable. Think about it really. It doesn't mean we do new stuff. What got us here won't get us there. We let go of old stuff. That's scary. That old stuff's keeping us safe. What needs to change in the calendar in order to make stuff happen? We're gonna have to find the mentor. You know, if you're gonna leave Tatooine and you're gonna go and start messing around on the Death Star, you need Obi-Wan with you to help you understand what you're doing here. You're gonna have to. Whenever we do this stuff, we enter a new world, whether it's a new chapter of our careers or a new environment at work or a new sporting environment or parenthood, we're gonna have to find someone to guide us there. So, the tiger, of course, tells us they're not gonna help you. Why would they help you? Why would someone as great as that help you? And maybe the first person won't, but I promise you, the 21st person eventually will. Just don't tell them they were the 21st call. Just don't go there. Find the mentor. We don't want to do this because it's vulnerability. We admit we need help. We don't like doing this stuff. We're going to have to find the mentor if we're going to make it happen. And then we're going to have to commit to complete. I want to illustrate this using um, 
using the free dive as a, as a kind of metaphor, really. And, uh, and to do that, to help us imagine it, I'm going to run this movie with the sound down. Now, there's a moment when you're on the surface here and you're about to start a, a free dive when you have to take a decision. And that decision is, I am now going to 101 meters in my case. Unless there's an emergency, if there's an emergency, this is not a macho sport. There's always tomorrow. If we have a problem, we're coming home. But if there's no emergency, I have to know at that, at that top moment before I start this part of the dive that I'm going to 101 meters non-stop. I cannot be there thinking to myself, oh, you know I'm gonna go to 80 meters, uh, I'm gonna have a little think, see how it is down there, uh, and if it's all okay, I'll carry on, but if I don't like it, I'm gonna stop. Because at 80 meters, you're under pressure. You're going through change. You're under nine times the Earth's atmospheric pressure at 80 meters. This means that your, your lungs have been compressed to around about the size of your fist. Previously, they occupied your rib cage. This means that uh, the, 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 the diaphragm, the muscle that separates our, our stomach area from our chest area, gets pulled up by the vacuum into your chest cavity. And that means that you look fantastic. <laughs> at 80 meters, right? If only there was somebody there to see you, but there's nobody down there, you're on your own, right? You can't be taking decisions at that stage. Unless there's a problem, of course, then you're coming home. Do I wanna do this is a very valid decision, but it's not one you're gonna take very successfully at 80 meters under the ocean. You're going through too much change. Ladies and gents, I was speaking about something called commit to complete because we have to decide at the start, we're going to see this through to the end. Why? Because there are gonna be great days, incredible days. We're gonna meet new people, things will happen, changes will come, we'll understand a new thing. There will also be bad days when we doubt ourselves and the confidence goes and we're not sure if we can get over this next hump and somebody's lost faith in us and we're feeling a bit lonely and small. We have to know that we're going through those points. We're going through that, we know it's coming and we're going through it just as it will come on a free dive to 101 meters. We have to commit to complete. So I left my sofa and I went to 101 meters. So what for you? For me, I met incredible people. I learned th about things that I, I didn't know I could do, I learned new things. I went to places that I didn't know somebody like me could go to. I went down to 101 meters. It was the most incredible, silent, peaceful place. While you're down there, the whole planet, all the oceans, all the mountains, squeeze you, hold you, give you the most incredible hug. As long as you've trained and you're in good shape to go there, it's fine, it doesn't bother you. It's pleasant, it's exciting, it's peaceful, it's loving. But importantly, when I came back to my sofa, I was different. I changed down there, we do. I don't know what the next chapter of your story would be, of course I don't. But I do know it's important you leave your sofa and you write that chapter. Why? Because each of our stories is unique. Each adds something to the sum total of us all. If the tiger takes control and you stay on your sofa and you don't write your story, then we're all the poorer for that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. I wish you a great story. Goodbye.